Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and in this uh, video we are doing a few examples following section 5.8, our last section in chapter 5. So let's get right into the examples. We have number one um, and it's a word problem. All of these are going to be 3D word problems and it says Josh is building a garden shed that is four meters wide. Four meters wide. The shed is the square right here. Uh, the two sides of the roof of the shed, I'm guessing, um, are equal in length and must meet at an angle of 80 degrees. Okay, so each of these sides of the roof of the shed are equal in length, so their length x, and they must meet at an angle of 80 degrees, which is shown here. There will be 0 0.5 meters overhang on each side of the shed. Determine the length of each side of the roof, so determine x. So where do we start this question? Um, we can see that we clearly have a triangle right here, uh, kind of um, boarded in blue. So we're going to have to be working with tri that triangle. And we have to notice that the four meters, right, that are noted here are from here to here, are just the square piece of the shed. Um, and there's a, f a 0.5 meter overhang of the roof, right? So first thing we want to note down is that this length right here is going to be 4 meters plus 0 0.5 meters plus 0 0.5 meters, which is going to give us uh, 5 meters, right? So the bottom length of this triangle is going to be 5 meters. And what do we do next? Well, we can't use the sine law. Right, because we have an angle and we have now a side opposite to that angle that we know the length of, um, but we don't have any other side or any other angle, so we can't really use the sine law. And it kind of looks like we cannot use the cosine law because for the cosine law, again, you kind of need a side angle side with an angle contained between those sides <laughs> or a side, side, and side. So we need to, we would need to know all the sides. But because these two sides of the triangle that we're working with, of the roof of the shed, are the exact same length, our x, right? We actually drop a variable in the formula of cosine, right? So instead of having a, b, c, right, as our variables, and then also angle b, now we can just call both of these sides a, or in this case x, we have, and now we have C and now we have angle B. So we're dropping from four variables to three and we notice that we have one side, so that knocks off one variable and we have the angle, which knocks off another variable. And the last variable is X, which we can solve for. So if we write out the formula, let's call this side right here B. So B equals five meters, right? And that's the side opposite to the angle we're using. So it's going to be on the left side of our equal sign. So B squared is going to equal the other two sides squared, right? So X squared, that's one side, plus X squared, that's the other side. And you see that usually we would have two different variables in this formula now, but since the sides are the same length, we only have one variable, X minus two times x times x, which is going to give us x squared, times cosine of angle B, angle opposite to the side that's on the left side of the equation. Now, if we just plug in our numbers and isolate for x, we can find our, um, our answer. So if we add these two x squared, we have 2x squared minus 2x squared cosine of 80 degrees times or uh, equals five squared, right? If we do five squared, we get 25. And if we take out an X squared, if we factor out an X squared from the right side of this equation, we get um, X squared times two minus cosine of 80 degrees. Okay, now we simplify, we keep evaluating we get x squared times 2 minus cosine 
of 80. So if we put this into our calculator, we will get 1.826 or about 1.826. And now we can simply divide each side by 1.826. 1.826, so these are going to cancel out. We're going to get x squared equals 25 divided by 1.826, which is going to give us about 13.69. Bring this over here. Now, if we square both sides, we're going to get x equals about the square root of 13.69, which is about 3.7 to one decimal place. And does it specify? How many decimal places it does not so we'll leave it at 3.7 because that's what it rounds to 3.7 meters and that's going to be the side length of each side of the roof so we'll do a therefore statement uh we don't really have any space so we'll put it just kind of down here therefore the length of each side of the roof is about 3.7 meters, okay? And that's it. Moving on to question number two, we wanna calculate, it says, Bert wants to calculate the height of the tree on the opposite bank of the river. To do this, he lays out a baseline 80 meters long and measures the angles shown above, so shown below. The angle of elevation from A to the top of the tree is 28 degrees, and it says calculate the height of the tree. So it says Bert um, lays out a baseline that's 80 meters long, so it's right here, it measures this angle, 30 degrees, and this angle, 85 degrees. And it tells us the angle of elevation uh, from A to the top of the tree is 28 degrees. So this angle, sorry, this triangle, which I'll draw in, let's do in red, from the top of the, this is the top of the tree, goes down to point A, right? You kind of have to see this in 3D, it kind of goes down to point A, and on the ground to, to the bottom of the tree, and then up the tree. And it says the angle of elevation is 28 degrees and the angle of elevation is right here. This angle is going to be 28 degrees. So if we start at point A, which is on the ground, and we look up to the top of the tree, that angle that we make with our eyes from the top of the tree with the ground, with the horizontal, is going to be 28 degrees. So I'll actually draw that triangle here so we can see it better. This is, let's say this is our our tree right here, like this green. We have our triangle. It's kind of going to look like this. And this is our point A. And this is our angle of elevation of 28 degrees. And this is actually going to be our right angle triangle, right? Because we're going to the bottom of the tree and to the top of the tree. This is the bottom of the tree, top of the tree straight up right so it's going to kind of make a right angle right here okay so that's one of our triangles our other triangle which i'll mark in blue or it's already marked in blue but i'll overline it it's this triangle to here to there and down to point a so again i'll draw it here so we can kind of see it better boom 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 and this angle, this triangle, unlike the other one, is flat on the ground. So we have point A here. This is 80 meters. This is 85 degrees and 30 degrees. And we want to find H, the height of the tree, which is this length right here. The left, the left side length of our right angle triangle. So what, we, what do we want to do? Well, if we remember from the theory video, uh, for the right angle triangles, we want to use our trigonometric ratios. And for all other triangles, we want to use the sine or cosine law. But what we have to notice is that these two triangles share a common side. They share 
this side, x, is this side, x. From we can we can see this on the drawing that those two tri triangles share that side, that side on flat on the ground, crossing the river. So we can use this because we're giving a lot of information from this triangle that we can, might be able to use to solve for x. And if we solve for x in this triangle, we can come back to our right angle triangle. And remember, with our trigonometric ratio, we only need a side and an angle, right? That an angle that's not the 90 degree angle to solve for all other sides because our ratios, for example, sine, use an angle and an opposite side and the hypotenuse, for example, right? So we have two sides and an angle. And the question already gives us the angle. We just need to find one other side to solve for the height. And that side is going to be x, right? So we kind of have to see um, how the triangles link together in the question. So through one triangle, we can find information for the other triangle. So let's focus on this one for now. We see that we have two angles. So remember, what we want to do first is use our ge geometric facts um, to find all their angles or sides that we can. And we know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So we can find this angle, which we'll call, let's say, theta. We know that theta is going to be 180 minus 85 minus 30. And so theta is going to be 85 minus 30. Uh, sorry, 180 minus 85 minus 30, 65 degrees. Okay, now what can we do with that information? Remember, if you go back to the table from the last slide of the theory video, one of the scenarios was angle, side, angle, right? Or angle, angle, side, right? the side being opposite to one of the angles we know. And at first, the side was opposite to an unknown angle, but using our geometric facts, we actually found out what that angle was. And in either of these scenarios, right, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side, if you remember, we can use the sine law to solve for the missing sides or missing angles or whatever. And in this case, we do want to find a missing side. We want to find X. So we can use the sine law because we have a side opposite to a known angle now and a si an unknown side opposite to a known angle, right? So we have three of the variables, oh, three of the variables that we need in the sine law. Um, so let's use it. Let's say that we have, let's call this triangle, this is actually point B. So let's call this point C, right? This is point C and this is also point C. And we'll call this point T or top of the tree, okay? So if we use our sine law, we can say that sine of B, right, over X, which is the side opposite to angle B, equals sine of C, right, or sine of theta, which is the angle at C, over side C, which we know. So now if we plug in our numbers, um, actually, we'll do it the other way. Since we're isolating for x, we'll flip it around. We'll say x over sine of b equals c over sine of theta. So now if we multiply each side by sine of b, we get x equals c sine of b over sine of theta. Okay. Now if we plug in our numbers, like I said, side c is going to be 80 meters. Angle c, angle b is going to be 30 degrees. And angle theta, as we just found out, is going to be 65 degrees. Now, if we plug this into our calculator, sine of 30 times 80 divided by sine of 65, it's going to give us about 44.14 meters. Okay, so this side of this triangle now is 44.14 meters, but what we also found out is this side of this triangle is 44.14 meters because they share that common side. So like I said before, from here, we can simply use our um, primary trigonometric ratio or our reciprocal to um, solve for the height of the tree, which is what the question is asking us for. 
So if we have angle 28 here, and we want to find the side opposite to that angle, and we want to, and we have the side adjacent to that angle. So what trigonometric ratio um, ha uses opposite and adjacent sides? Well, that's going to be our tangent. So tangent over angle 28 degrees, which is our angle of elevation, equals opposite, which is h, right? Opposite is h, and it over adjacent, which is x. If we multiply both sides by x, we'll get x tan of 28 equals h. And if we plug in x, which we just got, times tan 28 degrees, and we plug this into our calculator, we'll get h equals 44.14 times tan of 28 which will be 23.47. It doesn't really specify um, to what decimal place, but we'll do two. 23.47 meters. And that's our height of the tree. So we, we uh, give a therefore statement. Therefore, the height of the tree is about 23.47 meters, and that's it. And that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure, make sure to keep practicing, guys, because with these 3D problems, there's so, so many scenarios um, that a question could give you uh, that it's good to get practice with a lot of them and get practice with what methods you should use in each scenario. So keep practicing.